May I have your attention, please? The Earth is a sphere. That is all. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Let's talk about perspective. You know, it's pretty well understood, but for whatever reason, flat earthers either can't or just refuse to understand it. And it's so simple. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. And let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. The best way to demonstrate perspective is to set up a little simple observation. And that's what I've done on my workbench. You can see I've got six wooden blocks there. All six of them are the same height, exactly. But when you space them apart, going away from you, you see the perspective effect. The blocks in the distance appear to be getting smaller and smaller. Now, if we look at that from the side view, it looks like this. And now you can see that the blocks are all exactly the same size. If I wanted to represent these two views on a drawing, they would have to look just like what we see here. Looking at it from the end, like the first picture, you have to see the effect of perspective. When you look at it from the side, though, and make a drawing of that, you'll see that all the blocks would be exactly the same height. You don't have to make any adjustment at all to make that correct, and there's a reason for that. The blocks are all the same distance away from us. It's only things that are different distances away from us that are affected by perspective. You can look at the curve calculators like the one Walter Bislin has, and he shows that effect. There you see two imaginary obstacles that are each 10 meters in height, but they are different distances away from the observer. And so you see the effect of perspective just like you see in that first picture. Here's the same thing with a fence at a local sports area. Looking down the fence like that, you see that the fence posts are appearing to become shorter and shorter, and they go out to a vanishing point eventually. But when we look at it from the side, we see that the fence posts are, as we know, all the same height. There's a couple of red lines that help you find the top and the bottom of that fence. But the same thing happens in the curve calculator. You see that view, that drawing, which is representative of the side elevation. And in that drawing, the heights have to be represented at their true height. There's no perspective to be taken into account because all of that is an equal distance away from the observer. There's no effect of perspective whatsoever. So let's see how flat earthers try to muddle up this very, very simple concept. Fallacy of misplaced concreteness, making something which is not concrete into something that is physical and actual. Turning a model of a sphere, taking the idea that things in the distance don't change in their value being called height. So a 10 foot wall is going to be a 10 foot wall at 10 miles, 20 miles. 100 miles, 1,000 miles, doesn't matter what I draw inside elevation. That's right. When we look at this from the point of view of the observer, every fence post is in the same plane. And as the fence posts move further away, they become smaller in size due to perspective. But when we look at the orthographic side projection, Every fence post is the same distance away in this view. You won't see any change in the size of the object. Well, I've got a side profile of something. Let's just put this picture back on screen. You've got your head side of it on the left-hand side of the observation and your target on the right-hand side of the observation. So in this particular depiction, the mathematics of geometry that make up your sphere religion, you are seeing the side of your own head. So that's the first problem. I know you like to call this Muppet Vision and make that statement that I'm sure you think is cute about how you see the side of your own head. That's nonsense, Nathan, and you know it. This is simply an orthographic side projection. 
you're seeing the point of observation and the object being observed, which are all in the same plane. That's all you're looking at. Second problem is, this line, donkey dick tangent line that you now have, you can write whatever value you like on that line. It is an arbitrary. It depends on the amount of refraction that's taking place at the time of the observation. These two pictures are of the same two oil platforms. You've seen these before. The one on the top, the one you guys call the black swan, is taken on a day when refraction is tremendous. The one on the bottom is what's taken on a normal day. This is what you normally see. There is a tremendous difference in the horizon, the point that we see as the horizon in these two photographs. And that is strictly a function of the amount of refraction that's going on. Why do you guys have such a hard time understanding that? So I can say H is a 10 foot wall and O is me. And I can say that this line represents a distance of 10 meters between me and it. Or I can say this line represents a thousand meters or a million kilometers. And this value at H for the 10 foot wall is still going to be 10 foot. And it's still going to be 10 feet because the distance to it and the side elevation is not changing, you nitwit. That's where you fundy morons ask us why we can't see New York from England. Well, that's because you think a 10 foot wall is a 10 foot wall regardless of the distance. But there's a value you could attribute in reality to it. It's called, guess what? The apparent size. Pay attention because this is impressive. You're listening to a master con artist at work. Now this guy is going to talk about a line being represented as a dot when you see it from the end view. As if there's something wrong with that when in fact that's exactly what, what you see. A line is a dot when you look at it from the end view. He's going to talk about things disappearing because they're getting too far away to be seen. When we're talking about an elevation view where nothing is moving away from us. Boats don't disappear from left to right, Nathan. This is good. Go ahead. Continue. Now, what's that? You say you've heard this word apparent used quite a lot recently. Yeah, by Globeheads telling us about the apparent position of the apparent horizon. Redundant though it is. But their maths doesn't deal in apparent. And why doesn't it deal in apparent sizes? Well, because a 10-foot wall needs to be a 10-foot wall at any distance. So when it starts to disappear through angular size limitations, you can say it's Earth curve that's got in the way. What Earth curve's getting in the way? Well, the physical geometric Earth curve at G. Because that's your second horizon that we don't have. Are we understanding each other? Huh? You're an idiot! <laughs> so, you've removed perspective from the maths, turned it side on so it doesn't represent anything like reality. I don't see my own head in this picture. It's not there. Just the observation. Just H. I don't see a dot for a horizon in two different locations, G and H. I see a horizon running the full length of the image. Not a pretend horizon for the maths, an actual horizon represented as a single dot. That's not what we see. This is nothing like reality at all. It doesn't have perspective, otherwise known as apparent sizes. For your apparent horizon? So this is bullshit. This isn't the world we live in. To look at this and in any way infer that this represents this is completely balmy. This doesn't represent this. No, it doesn't, because you're intentionally confusing the two views. This is the view we actually see. This is the view from the point of the observer. When we look at the geometry, this is the view we see. That's the view that the curve calculator needs in order to determine the geometry. I swear, you guys get dumber by the day. It's nothing like it. You don't see the side of your own head. You don't represent things in the distance that have got very small as being the exact same feet and inches or meters value that they are when you're standing right next to them. The feet and inches value doesn't change with distance, but the angular, otherwise known as apparent, size does. Ignored to call Earth curve. That's all they've done. Hijack perspective. But now it's reached such a ludicrous stage where they're not even doing geometry anymore. 
What's this line got? Why is this dotted line dotted? That's giving you your geometry. Oh, because we don't see it. That's why we've got a dotted line for geometry instead of an actual line. So what we're we doing, we're looking at stuff with a curved line and then doing straight line geometry. No, that's a total bastardization of geometry. No, that's not a bastardization of geometry. That is representing light the way light actually behaves when it moves through the atmosphere. It doesn't move in straight lines. It moves in curved lines. So it's the end, Globeheads. There is no more geometry for you to assert. You don't have an R value to trust in. You certainly don't have a curved tangent line to apply to the observations where you put us inside elevation and show us with the side of our own head. It's game over. Absolutely nothing to hang your sphere in your Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hey Gladys. Uh -huh. We're out of here.